My name is Vince Cerf. I'm Google's chief internet evangelist, but I'm here in virtual form to respond to several questions that Access Chat is asking, so let's get right to it. The first one has to do with trying to make the internet more useful for the billions of people that are uh, relying on it every day. Uh, one of the answers to that is to make, make the network uh, safer and more secure, that protects people's privacy, that is makes the network more reliable, the applications running on it more dependable. Uh, in the absence of uh, attention to these features, uh, people will not be very interested in relying on the network for day-to-day -day activity and important transactions uh, that they undertake. The second question has to do with concern about the concentration of control over internet content. Uh, and here I think we have uh, several steps we can take. The first one is to reinstate the notion of net neutrality, which basically says that the, those who control broadband access to the internet are inhibited from uh, using that control to interfere with freedom of choice among the users of the internet or interfere with quality of service that those users get to favor their own products and services over that of others. Uh, all the suppliers of content should be equally accessible and should have equal access to the qualities of service that are available uh, on the network. I think we can also uh, try very hard to make sure that permissionless innovation is retained as a principle so that new ideas, new products and services can be introduced into the network and that there isn't a bias against that. Speaking of bias, that's the third question, and it has to do with understanding whether or not uh, information on the network is in fact biased in one way or another, or the algorithms that uh, drive us in one direction or another to find content is biased. One way we can deal with that is to look for correlations that suggest that the algorithms that are in use for selecting content or directing us in one way or another are in fact uh, neutral with regard to um, the content or the uh, directions in which we're uh, we're being uh, sent. Uh, we can also ask questions about training data that's used in machine learning algorithms to establish net, um, neural network uh, structures uh, that might in fact have biases built into them even if it's unintended. So looking at the training data sets may turn out to be yet another way in which we can defend against that possibility. Fourth question has to do with the technology. Uh, and the question is, is technology beneficial or malign? And generally speaking, my answer to this uh, is that uh, it's generally um, uh, neutral, but that means technology can be used and abused, and that's certainly true of the internet. So the question is, how do we deal with that problem? I would say that the most important thing uh, is that uh, the producers of technology need to be attentive to the potential for abuse, either at the time that the technology is being created or perhaps observing its use and asking how one can defend against abusive practices and harms that might occur in the network. That may mean technological response. It may mean legal response and law enforcement. It may even mean simply training people to be more sensitive to the ethics of, um, of the uh, use of these technologies. The fifth question uh, has to do with uh, a sort of anthropomorphism uh, of the network. Um, I, this, this notion of interacting with uh, computers uh, as if they were people, uh, which is exacerbated by humaniform robots that we sometimes imbue uh, with social uh, intelligence that they don't have. And when they ignore us, we get angry, but they actually, they're just running an algorithm and are largely insensitive to, uh, to our feelings. I, I think it's very important for people to recognize that uh, computer programs are not people uh, and that, uh, that we have to recognize their limitations and not get too bent out of shape if they don't behave the way we expect. On the other hand, I think we deserve good user interfaces that are, uh, you know, uh, that anticipate our needs uh, and anticipate the frustrations that people have. And so we have a right to complain that the user experience isn't satisfactory. Uh, last question uh, has to do with um, making the world a fairer, safer, and more inclusive place. Uh, and then the question is, does the dark side dominate? Well, here, um, 
I'm generally optimistic. I believe that most of the uh, internet applications, in fact, are intended to and are uh, largely beneficial. The information that's available to us on the net is extraordinary. It's enormous in scale and content, but it does leave us with the problem of distinguishing good quality information from poor quality information or deliberately misleading information. And how do we do that? Well, the answer to that, I think, is critical thinking. It means that we have to ask ourselves, where did this information come from? Is it corroborated by any other evidence? Do we have uh, any reason to trust uh, the sources of that information if we can identify it? Uh, was there a, uh, an ulterior motive in putting that information into the system? Uh, it's work uh, that we have to do in order to distinguish this uh, quality question. And in a sense, it's the price we pay for having access to this vast quantity of content that people are sharing uh, in the Internet. We have to work at the business of distinguishing good quality and bad quality. That will serve us well not only in the Internet environment, but for every other source of information I can think of, newspapers, magazines, radio, television, our friends, uh, and, and other sources that we might encounter. So those are my responses to uh, those six questions, and I hope that I'll get a chance to see what your answers are uh, in the future. Thanks so much. Bye for now.